move on now and talk to Indy about his stuff. So yeah, Indy, this is your first devlog. Are you nervous? I'm quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. The MechWarrior fans are super, super nice and would never say anything bad about any of us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love that reaction by Mark. That's fantastic. <laughs> no, um, yeah, welcome That's to your first, first time. Welcome, Indy. Welcome to Battletech, the most fanatical. Oh, I don't know. I think Warhammer's got a speed on that one. Anyways, uh, welcome, uh, Indy. It's good to hear a voice and see a face. And welcome to the uh, Battletech community. Don't worry. We uh, will we'll treat, you, treat you fairly under Geneva Conventions. <laughs> Just a friendly reminder, we have a sale going on over at our store. If you didn't know, a link will be down below. 10% off all orders over $10 for the entire month of April. Enjoy. Hey, what's going on, guys? Phil here, and we're going to be doing a review of the Mecha Online April Dev Vlog Maps, Mechs, and Design that just went live. I'm going to do this as my initial watch with you guys. Watch it through, comment, and uh, see what, uh, obviously, PGI is up to. And... Uh, Without further ado, let's go ahead and just uh, jump right in here, shall we? MechWarrior Line Solaris. Greetings, MechWarriors. Welcome to another devlog. With me today, we've got Mark, we've got Indy, Hello. and we have Francois. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to show you what we're working on. Indy, how are you doing? I'm doing really good today. Awesome. And Francois. I'm doing fantastic. That's awesome. All right, so let's jump right in. I got to just go ahead and stop and say, Francois, you are looking majestic, sir, if you're watching this. I love I love it. Just, all right, continue on. Also, this is our first real look at Indy. For those that don't know, he came on PGI a while back and was helping uh, with Cauldron and PGI's interaction. I do believe design uh, is his uh, his forte here, his job description. Don't know, don't know that for certain, but I do believe that is the case. Right into it with Francois and look at the next there. map. So what what is it, Francois, that we're gonna be working on next here? Uh, so right now I'm currently working on Vitric Forge. Unlike the original Vitter Forge, uh, we're going to go more with um, an industrial feel. So there's going to be less craters, uh, less clutter also in the road. It's going to have a lot of uh, different areas to fight in this map. So essentially this map is, unlike any other, going to be um, including four mini arenas. And it's uh, if you want, you can, can draw, draw on the it? screen. Yeah, yeah, go oh, ahead. Cool. I, I can totally capture the drawing. Have, like, one arena here, one arena here, another one here, and then another one here. Um, also, I'm also planning to make sure that this map is not going to be one of these that like you always have snipers on top of the walls and stuff like that. Um, there's way enough cover, way enough uh, verticality difference. And I also made sure to um, not put ramps everywhere so that snipers couldn't get everywhere that they wanted. Um, of course, you're going to have one ramp here to get on top here. And then you're going to have another one here to get on top here. Other than that, if you wanted to actually uh, go up onto these kind of mega structures here and here, you'll have the ramps here and here, here and here, and that's about it. And then another point that is really interesting is that uh, we're also adding tunnels to the map. So not only we're replicating this, this part of the map onto the other part, so that you have verticality, but we're also making sure that the players can actually traverse in it. So that is the top down, as you can see, of the middle uh, middle section. You have that ramp that goes down and that ramp that goes up, well, up and down, essentially like this. And then afterwards, for players, if they want to keep progressing, you can still go under well on that bridge right here. This gives me a lot of vibes from um, HPG, along with obviously aesthetically a uh, Rubelite. Um, it's interesting that he did point out about the sniper positions. That's one of the complaints with the recent map is that snipers have a huge uh, advantage, which is interesting because now that I've played it uh, for as long as I have, I don't necessarily, that's always the case. Um, uh, there tends to be a lot of brawling, a lot of movement they can be strong, but generally speaking, they're countered or they're strictly out of range. But I, I did notice that uh, the ability to go up on those high locations 
and uh, be able to maneuver the entire battlefield in Overwatch is really powerful. Even though it's further enough away to where ridge on ridge combat isn't happening, they can do quite a bit of work from up top. Uh, you've seen a lot of uh, ER large laser setups and ER peep. Um, being able to just sit back and do a lot amount of damage. So it is interesting that he said this, and I think that's uh, key there as far as uh, potential like brawls. Yeah, it looks like HPG uh, and, and Rubelite sort of had a had a baby, and that's what this is looking like so far. So that players with jump jets will be able to actually navigate quite easily into the arena without being too much of a hassle. Um, we won't be seeing heights such as in uh, Hellebore Outpost, but definitely there's going to be different types of elevation into the terrain. So not only we're adding more verticality, but we're also making sure that we have more depths into the terrain uh, compared to what was previously done into the Drake Forge. So into the other uh, screenshots, I think that you can actually see the tunnels that I included. So as you can see, uh, when you start the game, you're going to act well, the match you're actually going to have multiple therein uh, multiple paths to actually go to uh the middle and as matt is showing you essentially you have like three main paths the middle path is essentially a tunnel that is linked like a t-shape so that it actually allows players to connect from this point if they want to this point and vice versa and then they can also backtrack and come back here and if they want they can go under to get back up and to climb back up here now that's actually really cool i like that design um that's gonna allow a lot of movement to happen i'll say this and i've said it before i feel like a map like this as big as it looks like and and stuff would do so well with like a respawn game mode like a conquest respawn game mode with big ticket counting down and stuff it'd be so cool and like in the middle there could be a mech repair bay and uh for anyways i'm gonna yeah let's focus sorry this is looking really cool. It, it looks yeah, like I think it's gonna be fun. yeah, it looks like uh, HPG assets. Yes. Um, However, uh, unlike HPG, I am making sure that players are not going to be able to abuse the sides of the map. You have height into this map. Snipers, you can use it. But then again, I don't want people to go outside of the map. The main focus is to keep these five arenas, which is essentially the big arena being the map and then the four different arenas in, in constant battles. Because, like I want total chaos, but I also want to make sure that people are going to have their fun for every single um, uh, kind of play style. So of course the arenas have been taught in to uh, make sure that we were going to have a 360 degree approach so that whenever you approach from whether it be north or south or west or east, um, it's still going to be a good angle to approach the map. And you're always going to have height, uh, vantage points to make sure that you can actually see what's going on but there's also enough cover without being too cluttering without cluttering too much the map that it will be fun to play in so right right here it looks again if i if you know it looks like there's cover here like if you were to post up here you'd be able to see you know left right uh, on some of these again I, you know i do question like if you venture out here uh, and again, it looks like no man's land. There is some cover over here. Again, I, I'll have to see it, but it's interesting that he did bring up the note of these these edges and being able to skirt. We we have that problem with like HPG, but it's part of the map. And I think what he's sort of saying is maybe lights and mechs with jump jets can get up there really quick, but not necessarily big uh, mechs like the assaults where they can uh, with just ramps directly up there. Um, but it looks like someone could potentially maneuver there across these little gaps, but inter interesting regardless. Right now, uh, the timeline for this map is when? It's from May. We're, we're going to we're gonna release it in May, I do believe, because right now it's April, yeah, like next month, I'd say. So instead of like, so play, most players would be expecting this to come out in June when it was on the roadmap, but instead it's going to come out in May. So that's exciting yeah. news. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun, yeah. Looking forward to it. Mark, any thoughts? Obviously, that's good news, and it's one of those things I was talking about was I was hoping they were going to ramp up and do a lot of stuff for May, as May potentially looks like it's going to be a lot more than just, uh, you know, just another patch. It looks like potentially more with maybe even a venue. I don't know if they talk about that yet. I think it's going to be uh, very different from what we currently have, and, and that'll be exciting. More variety, always good. And how many modes are we... Uh... I mean, assuming everything works this is out, a good right? question. Why wouldn't it? Um. Uh, we would be looking at domination, 
Assault, Conquest, Skirmish, and that's about it. Good. No one Thanks, Francois. I'm excited about this map. Uh, obviously, we'll get some more media out there that's like more finished screenshots as we get closer to the final product and we get closer to that May release date. Uh, thanks for a look at that map. Mark, we hey. want to talk about the Crusader. And you brought a screenshot for us. Before we I look did. at it, what is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be looking out of the cockpit in the Crusader because that's what I'm working on right now. So uh, it feels most relevant. I can talk about it the most. So yeah, uh, this is the view from the inside of the Crusader, obviously. Initial reactions, very open. And obviously from the concept art, we knew that was going to be the case. Also to note, we do know for a fact because of Mark, also in my Twitch chat, which I stream Monday through Friday, 12 to 6 p.m. Eastern. You should come hang out. I'll have a link down below. Also Discord, all the things. He did confirm he's working on the cockpit. You just heard him say that. Someone else is doing the mech model. We don't know who. We don't know what. And the reason I do bring that up is to be a little bit of a critique which is i hope whoever's doing it right doesn't make absurd proportions and gets it right like the concept art that's been one of the biggest blunders with some of the concept art versus what we got i'm looking at you centurion and if you don't know look up original centurion artwork and look at what we got in game one is sleek and sexy the other one well not so much i hope so anyways let's roll obviously with this way that we're presenting it, it's actually a little strange to me. Uh, this is my first time doing a cockpit, which is uh, kind of exciting. I really like the shape of this cockpit. There were earlier versions that I liked too, but I really wanted to open it up more and have the cockpit be present, but mostly stay out of your way. I've, I've always preferred cockpits where you have a lot of visibility. You'll be able to look down and uh, you actually get a lot of visibility below as well as to the sides. Obviously, you can see like at the top, that's mostly the, the extent of what you're able to see and kind of those cheek areas that come in. That obviously is, is as far as you can go there and, and there. And then we've got like our uh, little monitor there. Sweet. Well, that's uh, looking really, really cool. Uh, for those worrying, uh, this this bit of cockpit glass green here is just temporary. I'm I haven't really spent time working on the materials for it yet. It's been modeling so far still. Even then, this this version of the picture is uh, several days old. I've made a few revisions since. So one thing to also bring up, because a lot of people don't realize this, is when you're in the cockpit, uh, it's not one entire mesh. And what you see on your screen when you're aiming at a mech is one mesh. What that player is in and looking at you and what you're in as far as the cockpit are completely separate. So that's why when people have exported the MWO 3D models, that sometimes the cockpits are much larger than what the mech is or vice versa. And that's for a reason They're they're not entire one mesh. It's not like you can open up the, uh, in this case, the Crusader and the cockpits actually inside. They don't, they, it's not like that. And again, uh, there's some scale and other uh, wonkiness to that. Well, I really like it. It translates the organic shape of what you see on the concept art. The one disappointing thing about the fact that the cockpit glass is mostly clear is that uh, in the actual shape of the cockpit, there's this strong arc that comes across here that just in, in the way that we view it here becomes invisible. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of figuring, trying to figure out how to make that show up without getting in your way because it comes right into the central area of your screen where I never ever want stuff to be. That's that's for playing the game. So this is actually a good point that he brings up, and it's one of the things that I don't know if you've ever played Titanfall, Titanfall 2. They actually did a really cool system, and that's where when you get in and you turn on the Titan uh, and the Titan closes up, you actually have these little screens that then display the outside. And I've always thought that was so Battletech, if you will, right? The ability to, you have this armored hull, and in this case, some mechs actually, you're not in the head assembly, you're actually down on the torso. A lot of people don't realize that light mechs and stuff like that generally the pilot is in the neck and or uh, torso part and it's only the uh you know um you know the head is only sensors and equipment and stuff like that so just keep that in mind unless you're like the locust then you're like super cramped man uh and if you've never uh, been in a tank like a m1a1 driver imagine that it's, it's tiny there's not a whole lot of room 
uh, very claustrophobic. But uh, anyways, I always felt like he just brought up, you know, that it's got this arch. And I always felt like if they would have went with that approach, uh, and again, Titanfall 2 did it really cool and it was after the fact. But uh, I do I do understand where Mark's coming from, which is that like uh, that uh, different shapes and stuff. You wouldn't have to worry about that, uh, you know, if it had that type of system. But it'll be interesting what he comes up with here. Well, it's looking great. And I hope you figure out that. And he did uh, say this is just. That. It's He's been yeah, revising it in so long, right? In three years. Did you work on the yeah. dervish? I did model the dervish. So this is, and it was, I think it was June as well that it released. So it'll be exactly three years. Wow. That's so cool. I'm really, really excited. It's a sign of good things to come for sure. On the last few packs, you've been doing the in the mech bay with Mark. Um, yes. As we get closer to release and stuff. Is there any plans to do that for the Crusader? Yes. Uh, we're probably starting that next week, and nice. I'll be showing more there uh, and answering questions there. And as well, we can talk about the Platinum Packs there and the art for that. Let me ask you guys a quick question while I'm here. How many of you guys did the pre-order for the Crusader? Let me know down in the comments. Um, I know covering the variants and the enti entire chassis, there's a lot of... Obviously, uh, hype. It's first mech since the Dervish. Mark actually did the Dervish, which again, actually felt like the model was really well done. So uh, again, I'm interested to know who's doing the uh, full scale model. But uh, regardless, it's cool uh, to see him uh, excited about this. Cool. If people are interested. So look forward to that next week. All right. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to move on now and talk to Indy about his stuff. So yeah, Indy, this is your first devlog. Are you nervous? I'm quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't worry about it. The MechWarrior fans are super, super nice and would never say anything bad about any of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that reaction by Mark. That's fantastic. <laughs> no, um, yeah, That's welcome to your first, first day. Welcome, Indy. Welcome to Battletech, the most fanatical. Oh, I don't know. I think Warhammer's got a speed on that one. Anyways, uh, welcome, uh, Indy. It's good to hear a voice and see a face. And welcome to the uh, Battletech community. Don't worry. We uh, will will treat you treat you fairly under geneva conventions all right hey vlog uh super happy to have you here um i want to start off by saying like what is it you're primarily doing uh on the project right now right now i help bring characters or max into the game um i work with the cauldron we do monthly updates to the game and changes through the equipments and quirks and uh, we're doing some weapon tuning right now as well. So um, looking forward to bringing those changes, keeping the game fresh and uh, tuning. All right, so Indy, what, you said you're working on new mechs. Um, what new mechs are coming in the April patch? Uh, for the clan mechs, for the Platinums, we have the Cougar H, we have the Arctic Wolf A, we have the Nova Cat B, we have the Mad Cat Mark B. For the Inner Sphere, we have the Wolfhound 1A, we have the Crab, 27SL, Black Knight, uh, 6B, and we have the Mauler MX90. So yeah, that's a cool selection. So you guys heard it here. I know on the forums you guys have been asking what variants are we going to actually put in. So we'll actually put some of that information uh, down below in the devlog post as well. And now, I do want to point out, I did a patch notes review about the Platinum, but if you're watching this, the Platinum, the first collection, I wasn't really as interested in just because those mechs didn't interest me. But one thing to note about them and why you may be interested or not interested is the variants being selected. As of right now, the, uh, you know, the, the second one, the Mark II Bravo, if you really like the Mark II Bravo and you're not as fan of the Death Strike or maybe you're not interested or you already got the Death Strike and you want something new, you can play the Mark II Bravo now, which is basically a hero mech, and then use that Platinum camo on all the um, Madcap Mark IIs. So there is value. It just it's in the eye of the beholder. You know, um, if you like the Cougar like myself and maybe you don't own the hero or had the, you know, prime special, whatever, and you wanted it, you can now get it and get that bonus. So there is that value there. And I do want to point that out. The Crab 27SL is fantastic. Uh, same thing with the Wolfhound 1A. It used to sort of reign supreme. Um, so there are some value. Again, it's up to you if you do get it. Um, again, I don't do like a should you buy or whatever. But do look at it that way. As there is the value there. Getting that 30% C-Build boost on top of all the plat uh, premium time and stuff like that. So um, just, a, just a heads up on that. And aside from, you know, putting mechs in the game, you also work with the Cauldron. 
how is that going working with the cauldron like what how do you interact with them uh, we have a discord channel where we interact with most of the cauldron in there and we exchange information back and forth and uh, with that information we make changes to the game yep they'll ask for some data on some mech usage stats or some equipment stats or something and then we'll get them that data and then based off that data they'll say hey uh, we think we should make these kinds of changes and then we'll review those changes and then if they are okay we'll put them into the game so uh you may be asking okay indy um he's a designer what i see him doing is something that uh, i did a little bit back in the day with quirks and we've seen other devs like chris and stuff do which is he's the uh, he's the guy that takes the xml uh, data and entry sheets and gets them into the game that's what he does in particular so if you're wondering um obviously he's going to lean on the cauldron for the uh you know feedback because he's not the expert at the game He's not the longtime vet, not that I'm aware of. I may be incorrect, by the way. If I am, feel free to correct me, Matt and Darren. But that's that's his his position, that you need someone to be able to do that. And the reason being, for those that don't know, is Mark was having to do that a while back, which then bogs down a uh, 3D modeler. And as you've seen, they actually have increased staff. You've got Francois on maps, Mark now doing 3D models, and someone else as well, and now Indy. So um, just a little bit behind the scenes of how that works and why. So, follow-up question to that is, who is your favorite uh, member of the Cauldron, and why is it Naveed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Naveed is just awesome to work with. I've always been working with him since, like, day one. Yeah, he's, he's a great resource. Uh, there's just a ton of great people. You hear that, Bear Claw? Cauldron, don't get me wrong. Not Matt's favorite. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a summary. Got an introduction to Indy here. He's been working with the Cauldron. Mark's working on the Crusader, and Francois is working on maps. Um, but these guys are the ones getting you content in the game. So yeah, that's it for this devlog. Bye from me. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, people. I just realized Francois looks like the character from Call of Duty. <laughs> he does. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. You're right. The captain. Yeah. All right. Captain All Price. Right. Yeah. All right. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> I've only played the original Call of Duty. I gotta look this guy up. All right. I should have had the booty hat, you know? Yeah. All right. So overall, um, just a few things to point out. It's cool seeing in, you know, again, the map being worked at. Um, it's it's one of those. I know it's a mixed bag. Some people don't like the newer maps. I actually really like uh, Hellebore Springs. Um, I do feel there's some uh, really fun matches that occur in playstyle. And also one thing to factor in here is on the old, those newer maps, rotation isn't as much, right? It, it does lead to say is rotation ha does uh, and is exacerbated by uh, player behavior, but also map design. Map design can really just launch that forward. And so it's really cool to see. Uh, I like the uh, routes here, right? Tunnels are always great. Options are great. Movement is great. You do have verticality uh, again. So it'll be interesting to tackle this. I will point out that when a map comes out, it's absolutely chaos. And um, sometimes I don't like the map right away because I don't know where to go. So that's something that, um, you know, I always struggle with. So if you come into my streams and you ask me how the map is and it just launched, I have no idea. You're going to have to give it about two weeks, three weeks of me constantly playing it. Um, if we look at here at the Crusader, just a sort of feedback. I like the cockpit. Um, I like the shape. It'll be interesting seeing if he actually comes up with any type of like, uh, physical bevel. I mean, because it really does go in the middle. Um, I don't know if you'd want to mess with that. Uh, even if it was a different, maybe a different color, like just green hue, maybe, I don't know. Um, other than that, uh, the platinum mechs, uh, we talked about that. Uh, some of the gameplay changes. I don't know how the equipment health and weapon health will really change the game. Um, but they are looking at it and I do think machine guns need to look at, but again, it's so tough to balance those weapons, and I really do truly mean that. I know it firsthand. It is super, super difficult. So um, it'll be interesting seeing what happens there. But overall, it's cool to see new members. Again, Indy, this is the first time uh, we've heard about him. Uh, we have never seen and or heard him. So again, welcome to Battletech McWarrior. Um, but yeah, this has been your review. Uh, let me know what you guys think about uh, the devlogs. Uh, I thought they were going to get this one out a little bit quicker, um, but you know, here we are. 
This may also be the last devlog uh, that we see Solaris up here and uh, Mechor Online Revival. I don't know what they're going to call it. If, it if, if I called it, who knows? Again, let me know what you guys think of the name and Solaris. It will be moving to the event queue. They didn't confirm event queue in uh, May, but uh, let's cross our fingers. Again, let me know um, if you're looking forward to event queue and what would you call Mechor Online with this new sort of re revival, revisit, and actual development happening down in the comments below. Click that like button, share this with other MechWarriors out there. Let them know, let the YouTube algorithm spread the word of Kerensky. And again, I did mention I stream Monday through Friday, 12 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Join me on Discord, links down below. And if you guys wanna help support the channel, consider becoming a patron. It really does help, it keeps the lights on, food on the table, and food is always good because hobbits like food. So if you haven't done that, Check that out. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Until next time.